Hello, Inga. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? All good. All good. Uh, is it home office in Reykjavik too? Yes, it, it is home office and it's actually quite cozy at the moment because it just started snowing. So it's a good, uh, good time to be at home as we all should be at this time. As we all should be at this time. Yeah, same in Stockholm. It's home office, but but sun is shining today. Um, it is a it is a weird situation we all are, are in now. Yeah. So I would like to talk to you about crisis management. Uh, crisis management in the destination marketing and destination development sector. Um, in your role as uh, director for Visit Iceland for about ten years, you have dealt with many different crises, and I think the most. Um, well, the biggest one was the, the volcanic uh, eruption in 2010, so quite exactly 10 years ago, April 2010, when uh, an Icelandic volcano closed down the airspace of, of uh, Western and Northern Europe. Uh, so tell us about this crisis from a crisis management and crisis communications perspective. What did you do to deal with the crisis? I think at the time it was a new situation for all of us in tourism and no one was expecting something like that to happen. And uh, comparing the crisis together today and, and then is a completely different situation. Um, at the time, the Eyjafjallar Jökull, uh, the volcano, was actually affecting the world a little bit more than actually Iceland in general. Uh, because it was uh, affecting the, uh, the air traffic and so on, but there was a very small part of Iceland being affected. And um, but the news was telling a different picture. They were t showing a very dramatic picture of Iceland, and that was the the sort of the um, message we needed to get across that we were actually safe and we were okay in Iceland at the time. So very uh, important part of, of the communication we did at the time was to start a crisis communication group, and that was uh, people brought both from the public sector and private sector, which I think was very much important to keep going. Uh, and um, we were, you know, meeting every day. We were going through the communication, what was happening, the traffic, the air traffic, and so on, and deciding on the next steps. And this time, we actually decided to keep going to look forward because we knew this was a temporary um, thing that was happening. That and we needed to sort of to save the summer for the Iceland Iceland situation. And at the time, we started to start uh, when we when it was appropriate time. And that's always a difficult to, to figure out in crisis communication when it's appropriate. Uh, we started a campaign, the largest one for Iceland ever. Uh, we inspired Iceland, which many people know today. And uh, we had over 100 stakeholders with us. But what I think was um, crucial for us in the communication at the time is that we were very consistent, consistent in what we were doing. And the, the message we were getting across, getting across was that um, Iceland was uh, awake, and um, Iceland, uh, in a literal way, we were awake, and, and to tell the stories about uh, different parts of Iceland and to get other people to share the stories. And one of the biggest things we did with the Prime Minister at the time, we called the Iceland Hour, was that we asked the Iceland nation to stop for a whole hour and send out a, a, an Iceland and a humorous video from Iceland with dancing people, if you remember that. And I think that showed a lot how the people power can actually affect. So I think there are four points in this, is that we kept going. We were also very consistent in what we were doing. And also um, we started a crisis group. And most importantly, we shared positive stories from our country. And I think that helped us a lot moving forward. Very interesting, very important uh, lessons learned from that crisis. And like you said, we're in a very different type of crisis now with the whole, the global tourism industry uh, being heavily affected by, by the coronavirus crisis and the restrictions coming with it, the, re the response to the crisis. So in your view, what can a destination marketing organization do to deal with this type of crisis? Yes, like you say, we're in a completely different kind of a, a crisis. We're talking about human lives today and in a way also human kindness, I would say. And I think, I mean, this time around, we're all in, all in this together, the whole world. And like you know, the UNTWO says, you know, stay at home to be able to travel tomorrow. That's sort of the slogan that they're using at the, at the moment. And I think there are four main points for, for me in this is that you know, start a crisis communication group and reassess your strategy. 
uh, I think it's vital to have the stakeholders on board to have that kind of a discussion, um, you know, take the status and so on. Uh, I think it's comforting as well at these times. Um, the second point I would say is to create a platform for cooperation with your stakeholders if you don't already have that. To have that kind of a, a platform where you can, you can share your knowledge and share your thoughts and so on. And then I'm talking about the bigger group. I'm not only talking about like a closed group with the public private. I'm talking about everyone around you. And the third point in that is to be a support to your stakeholders, to support the stakeholders in, in this situation. And then not only thinking about the local community, think about your, your tour operators abroad, the airlines and so on. What can you do? And also maybe in this, think about the other destinations. Can you be of uh, uh, help or can you use your knowledge or even just cry on each other's shoulders, I think, in, in that sense. And then my fourth point in this is that um, I think I'm more about the traveler to, if, if you could say, be, do something good for the world. Don't stop the communication at this time because, I mean, we're all sitting at home and we, we, we are still dreaming, but be relevant. It has to be a relevant message. But what are we all doing at the moment? We're all sitting at home, we're working from home, we have the children at home, and maybe we can have some fun, uplifting messages from our destinations and maybe a little bit of a dash of humor. But again, it has to be relevant. And mm -hmm. I think the most important, don't stop telling the story of your destination at this point. Yeah, I like that message. I mean, we're all in this together, so we need to respond together and, and collaborate, be it on yeah. the local or national or, or, or international level. So I also would like to take the opportunity to ask you about the future of traveling. Um, I mean, even though it's difficult to predict when this crisis will come to an end, uh, will the way we travel go back to normal, you think? Or will the crisis have kind of a long-lasting effect on the way we travel and on the future of traveling, to your, to your mind? I think it's clear that this um, crisis is really reminding us of the luxury it is to travel. And I think we will never stop traveling in that sense. Um, but there is um, a lot that will change. What it is exactly, we don't know at this point. But um, if you think about the problems or the challenges and the opportunities we had in the tourism industry before, I think we have to con combine this all together, the sustainability, the climate change, this coronavirus, the health and safety and, and, and so on. All of this together is sort of the future of tourism in that sense. But how it's actually going to be, we don't know. But on the short term, um, I mean, there are going to be less traveling. It's going to be more expensive to travel because there's going to be less travel, uh, less flights. Also, um, people, if they start traveling in the in the um, this year, they're going to maybe stay longer in the places they go to and, and select them more carefully. Also, I think um, if you think about um, the world, we have family and friends all over the world. They will probably go a lot to our family and friends in that sense, traveling to that, those places. But think also that we are going to choose places that are not as crowded because of the health and safety as well. But but one of the things we I think we need to think about as a DMO is that people are going to travel a lot more locally now, a lot more. And I think that's the target group that we need to put a focus on uh, in the beginning, uh, in that sense. But other thing I think I need I think we need to be. Um, you know, realistic in this. There's not one big campaign going to save our destination at all. I mean, this is going to take some time and it's going to take some time to recover and it might be a backlash and so on. So as I said before, I think we should look at the positive stories that we have and, you know, looking forward in that sense, how we can use the people power sort of to tell the stories of our destinations and instead of thinking about a big boom that is going to save everything. I think we need to think about, you know, earning trust and, and, and put our destination into the new norm um, in this. And that's, no one really knows how long time it's going to take. But I've always said in the past that you have to have resilience, adaptability and patience if you're going to be in a DMO. And but you also have to have a bit of a humor and joy in this all. And I think, you know, we are all in this together and thinking about the future have to take one day at a time, but also try to think a little bit about the future. But, you know, you are in difficult times, so we just have to stay safe for the moment and, and use the tools that we already have and use them wisely. Mm. So, Inga, thank you so much for this positive 
message. I, I really like it and, and like these keywords, adaptab adaptability, resilience, and, and patience, and, and people power, and, and finding the positive stories. So thanks a lot for great advice and, and insights. Um, I would just like to end by saying that we at Future Place Leadership, we are looking at what we can do to support different destinations in this crisis. Uh, and we see that there is a need for experience sharing, uh, exchange of experiences and, and lessons learned because everyone are now, is now trying to, to deal with this crisis. Uh, so we will organize a seminar on 21st of April where we will uh, create an opportunity for destinations to, to discuss experiences. And you will join us. Uh, that we're really, really grateful for to share your advice and, and insights in that in that seminar or webinar because it will be digital, of course. Uh, so on that note, I would like to thank you so much, Inga, for taking this time to to talk to me and to share your your experience and your your advice. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure, and I hope my thoughts have given someone a, a, a positive story. I'm sure they have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.